Hello, this is David with Interest Rate Swap Valuation, a challenging exercise in finance. Let's try and make it less painful. Using John Hull's example 7.2 from the ninth edition, here's the word problem. Suppose that some time ago a bank agreed to receive six-month LIBOR and pay 3% per annum on a notional principle of $100 million. That's the essential swap. This bank is going to receive a floating rate payment based on LIBOR in exchange for paying a fixed rate. On a notional of 100 million, a key aspect of the interest rate swap is that the 100 million here is not actually exchanged by the counterparties. It's just referenced. And that's what notional means. And that's why notional is a key word here. The swap has a remaining life of 1.25 years or 15 months. And then we're given LIBOR rates with continuous compounding at 2.8, 3.2, and 3.4%. Finally, we're told the six month LIBOR at the last payment date was 2.9%. Why are we given that information? That's because in a vanilla or typical interest rate swap, the prevailing LIBOR at the last payment determines what the upcoming floating rate payment will be. So this tells us that the next floating rate payment is 2.9%. And it's the only future floating rate payment that we know. And so if I come here to the calculations and I'm I've diagrammed here the LIBOR curve assumption that we're given. A reminder here that it's an exchange of pay fixed for a floating LIBOR. And then I've got the LIBOR curve assumptions in continuous compounding that we were given and the associated discount factors. So we were told that the 2.8 is, is with continuous compounding. That means the discount factor is just E raised to negative that rate times the number of years gives us 0.993 and we have a discount factor then at three months nine months and 15 months how do i know that these are the only three cash flows we care about well the problem told us that the swap has a remaining life of 18 months and the swap's going to pay or settle every six months so i can just walk backwards in time here to infer that there's going to be a settlement six months prior at nine months or 0.75 years. And then I walk backwards another six months to 0.25 years or three months. And so we're valuing the swap, looking forward to settlements at three months, nine months and 15 months. The LIBOR curve assumption gives us associated discount factors. And then we can go to John Hall's first approach, probably the more popular one because it matches our intuition a little more is to treat the swap as if it were two bonds. It's really as if, it's not really two bonds because we're gonna break it into a floating rate bond and a fixed rate bond, but we're gonna include that 100 million as we would with a bond. And But keep in mind what I said, that the 100 million is not really exchanged. We're just using it to value each of these segments as if it were a bond. So I'll take the fixed cash flow bond, well really because it's the easier one. And that is just a, 15 month bond that's going to have a coupon in three months. What's this coupon going to be? Well, it's the fixed rate, 3% times the notional of 100 million. That's 3 million, but it's semi annual, paying every six months. So it's half of that, half of 3 million, 1.25. So you can see here how simple that is. Notional times the fixed rate divided by two. There's a coupon in three months, a coupon in nine months. And then because we're valuing this swap as if it were two bonds, just with a vanilla bond, like a fixed rate bond, we would have the final coupon plus the par or face value of 100. So that's the future stream as if it were a fixed rate bond. And then you probably know that we just multiply those future values by the discount factor to get the corresponding present value. It's going to be less. In this case, rounded 1.49. That's the point of discount factors, right? Discount factors allow us just to multiply the future value by the discount factor to get the present value. Then we just sum those. That's my present value column here. So if we decompose or parse the swap into two bonds, our fixed rate bond here has a price or present value of 100.23 million, or that's really a, hundred million and a hundred and million two hundred thirty thousand isn't it that's the price of the fixed rate bond then we just do we want to do the same thing with the floating rate bond 
although we have a shortcut here and in my experience this is the key challenge this is the this is the idea that gives everyone a little bit of trouble here with this valuation and it's just the idea that if you think about this fixed rate bond in three months it's going to pay that coupon and then what's going to be the price of that bond well a floating rate bond prices to par immediately after it settles a coupon that's because it's really a fair deal at that point so we know that this floating rate bond has a value of a hundred million or par at three months exactly and for that reason we could take the floating rate bond and just treat it as a single cash flow all it is is it's that most recent six month LIBOR of 2.9%. Recall that determines the upcoming floating rate coupon, 2.9 times 100, but it's half of that. So it's gonna be 1.45 million. And then we're allowed to add the notional to that, 100 to that, simply because, not because there is not a stream of future floating cash flows, there is, but simply because in three months in the future, the fair price of that bond going forward is exactly par. So we only need to include the 100 million at three months. So in the case of the floating rate bond, there's a single value at the next coupon. It's gonna be the next coupon plus par exactly. Similarly, we multiply by the discount factor to get a lower amount, and that's gonna give us the price of the floating rate bond. And then the idea here was to value this swap as two bonds and from the perspective of the bank in the question they are going to be receiving a floating rate so they're really receiving this higher value and they're going to be paying a fixed rate which is a lower value so this um, interest rate swap to this bank has a value of positive 511 or about 512,000 the counterparty has a corresponding value of exactly the uh, opposite or negative sign as a negative value. So that's all there was to it really. The key challenges are to be mindful of the fact that we are given a LIBOR in semi-annual as opposed to LIBORs in continuous and with continuous compounding we then discounted them appropriately so these LIBORs were used to discount the cash flows as opposed to com computing the future cash flows. And then the other key idea is to keep in mind that a floating rate bond prices to par immediately after a coupon is paid. Thanks very much.